to Kansas, gateway to Oz. Under the rainbow, this is where it was. Hollyhocks and red ripe tomatoes, and churned homemade ice cream. Let me tell you, Kansas is more than tornadoes. It's the best part of Dorothy's dream. Today Around Kansas introduces Rudy Wendland, the man who helped make Smokey Bear famous. Then learn about Cyrus K. Holliday, originally from Pennsylvania, who made Kansas his home and the center of his many business ventures, including the founding of the Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe Railroad. Next, enjoy a poem from Ron Wilson, and we'll end with a look at a mushroom called the Puff Ball. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. This segment brought to you by Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego, just a short drive down the Yellow Brick Road. Well, here it is early Wednesday morning again. I'm Frank. I'm Deb. And this is Around Kansas. And of course, you know, we really haven't put a plug in for the Dillon House in some time, so we'll do that this morning. Uh, this is our set. We come to the Dillon House and, and uh, do this show, but we move around all throughout the, uh, throughout the house. And of course, the various seasons, the decor changes and what have you. And it's a beautiful place to have, uh, if, if your club is having a meeting, mm -hmm. uh, it's a great place for wedding receptions or weddings or whatever. And so uh, you can also take a look at it. It's right across from the state capitol so you can come in and take a look at this place. It's a beautiful house. And you better uh, give them a call soon because uh, with fall coming on, <laughs> you know, and then the Christmas season, a lot of people are gonna be wanting to have their events here. So you better call them quick to, <laughs> to get on the schedule. It, it is lovely and the facility is so comfortable um, no matter what the season is. It's always pretty, it's always comfortable and, and we're just thrilled that we can be here every week because yeah. it's really nice. <laughs> so. Anyway, you've been up to stuff as usual. Oh man, just all over the place. And I gotta put in a plug. I know we talked a little bit uh, a couple of weeks ago about July 4th, but um, I didn't get a chance to mention, uh, Dr. Jake has a cavalry tribute group. I think more than reenacting might be um, uh, more appropriate. So it's a bunch of guys depending on, and gals, depending on the time, you know, whether or not they're in the middle of harvest like they have been. and. Um, so they do all kinds of events. They do um, the uh, Memorial Day things. But Dr. Jake used to work with another veterinarian, Dr. Heath Hayden, at the Oakley Vet Clinic before they both went out on their own. So Dr. Heath went to Texas. And he is a vet in Canadian Texas. So he invited Dr. Jake and his cavalry group to come down for the rodeo and, do, and present colors at the beginning of the rodeo. Well, Rodney Mays was the only guy who uh, could take time off from harvest to go with him. So when they got there, they recruited this little girl to carry the flag. So it was um, Dr. Jake and Dr. H and, uh, and Rodney, and this little girl, Taylin Wright, 10 years old, that big, I swear, <laughs> she's just the tiniest little thing, and she put on the cavalry garb and carried the flag for them. She was amazing. Huh. And Jake on uh, July 4th led the riderless horse into the arena and the announcer was awesome and it was just the most beautiful way to start the rodeo. All kinds of folks from Kansas down there competing. So, uh, you know, the folks in Kansas that are riding rodeo, it's not just in the Kansas rodeos. <laughs> they make us look good all over the place. And I can tell you, Dr. Jake and Rodney really made Kansas look good that day down there. And everybody in Texas knew that they were from Kansas. And at the 4th of July parade, they won a trophy for the best costumed horse and riders. And it was uh, kudos, kudos. Yeah, I was so proud. All right. <laughs> hey, we have some great stories today, so we stay do. tuned. We do. Watch Ag AM in Kansas online at agaminkansas.com. Buying a car shouldn't be this hard. And at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego, it isn't. It's actually awesome. 
Whether you want a new or used car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. Even if you want to custom order a new car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. See Toby's team at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego. We're awesome. LeCompton, the name was splashed across newspapers throughout America and Europe. It was debated in the halls of Congress. LeCompton interprets its unique territorial history with two museums and other sites. Events throughout the year celebrate history and community. Experience the life of the mountain man, American Indian, trappers and traders at the annual Bald Eagle Rendezvous, September 22nd, 23rd and 24th. Spend the day in historic LeCompton shopping, eating, savoring the rich history. Support Kansas agriculture education with an AgriTag. AgriTags are available anytime at your county treasurer. They look great on cars and trucks. For more information, go online to ksagclassroom.org. This segment brought to you by Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center. Your stem cells, your health, your life. We're back. So, so were you a Smokey Bear fan? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, the reason I'm chuckling is because, you know, for so long, so many people, me included, called it Smokey the Bear. The Bear. The, the bear. bear. Right. But no, it's Smokey Bear. Smokey Bear. Right. That's right. So, That's right. And I did the same thing. So um, Kansas has a very unique connection to Smokey Bear. Do you know what that is, Frank? No, I do not. The artist that primarily drew Smokey Bear, not the first time, but that drew most of the images that we're familiar with, um, humanized him, is from Herndon, Kansas, and hmm. went to KU. Wow. Well, I know, who, who knew? Who and knew? he, uh, Rudy Wendelin, and he wound up living in Virginia and in the DC uh, suburbs, and just a phenomenal artist, and Smokey Bear, my God, there's hardly a more recognizable um, figure, icon, advertising, personality, whatever the, the yeah. term. You're an advertising guy. What do you call those? What do you call him? <laughs> well, and, a spokesperson, okay. but, but, an an icon, spokesperson. But, but it would be an icon in this case, yes. Let's watch this segment about one of Herndon's most famous sons. And remember, only you can prevent forest fires. Rudolph Rudy Wendelin was a United States Forest Service employee and the best known artist behind Smokey Bear, according to the Forest Service's website. Beginning in 1944, Rudy became the full-time artist for the Smokey Bear campaign. He was considered Smokey Bear's caretaker until his retirement in 1973. Rudy was born in Herndon, Kansas on February 27, 1910. He studied architecture at the University of Kansas and studied art at several art schools. He went to work for the U.S. Forest Service in 1933 as an illustrator and draftsman. He served in the United States Navy during World War II and returned to the Forest Service after the war. He completed hundreds of paintings of Smokey Bear. He was not the first to draw the icon, but in his hands, Smokey morphed into the more human image that most Americans recognize. In 1944, Smokey appeared on a poster with the slogan, Smokey says, care will prevent nine out of ten forest fires. Three years later, Smokey's mantra had been amended to the now familiar, remember, only you can prevent forest fires. In May 1950, a fire started in the Capitan Gap of New Mexico's Lincoln Forest, destroying 17,000 acres of woodlands. Among the survivors, a three-month-old black bear cub discovered clinging to a singed pine tree by a crew of firefighters brought in from Texas. A game warden and his family nursed the injured cub. The Forest Service saw in this orphaned bear the opportunity to bring the cartoon to life. The small bear was named Smokey and went to live at the National Zoo in Washington, D.C. His illustrator, Rudy, received the Medal of Honor from the Daughters of the American Revolution in 1998 for his work on the Smokey Bear campaign. Rudy also designed several commemorative postage stamps. Among these were a stamp honoring John Muir, one honoring John Wesley Powell, and a Smokey Bear stamp in 1984. Rudy died from injuries, suffered in a car accident in Falls Church, Virginia in 2000. But what an amazing legacy he leaves America. Hi, I'm Annette from Jackson's. Our annual gigantic sale will be this Saturday, 
for every plant in the greenhouse and in our nursery from annual to perennial shrub, tree, or water plant will be half price. Don't miss our biggest sale of the year. WIBW Jackson's Greenhouse Garden Club members can shop Friday, Saturday, and Sunday when they present their membership card. They'll receive the 50% sale prices. Jackson's Greenhouse has what you need today. When your living depends on agriculture, you can depend on KFRM 550 AM. If you're in the southwest three-fourths of Kansas or the northern half of Oklahoma, catch us at 550 AM on the radio dial. But if that isn't you, listen on your cell phone at TuneIn Radio or on your computer at KFRM.com. We promise to keep you informed, entertained, and company as you go through your day. KFRM 550 AM, the voice of the plains. We would like to join your management team. Buffalo Bill Cody earned his legendary title in Oakley. Bring the family and come celebrate Oakley's pioneering history and unique geography at two sites, the Buffalo Bill Cultural Center and the Fick Fossil Museum. Cody's statue marks his achievements and welcomes visitors to the Cultural Center. The Fick Fossil Museum houses world-class fossils and artifacts. You'll find Oakley at the hub of U.S. Highways 83 and 40 and I-70. Stop for the legend. Stay for the day. Discover Oakley. This segment brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. Progress powered by Kansas farmers. And we're back again. Aren't you glad? <laughs> <laughs> I know I am. <laughs> <laughs> we're here. So, um, one of my favorite series running now is uh, Hell on Wheels. Oh, gosh. And I'm sure that, I mean, there's, there's some history in it and all of that. Uh, but I don't know if you're familiar with I've met, I've met it. I met Anson Mount. Oh, but, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's pretty much about the building of the Union Pacific and then the uh, Southern Pacific, and, and it's getting close to the end of the series right now, which is really going to be sad because I love Westerns. But uh, anyway, the only reason I'm saying this now is because, of course, Topeka, Kansas, is very famous for the Atchison, Topeka, and out there... Santa Fe Railroad, which of course was built by Cyrus K. Holliday, one of the founders of Topeka, Kansas, USA. One of my favorite people. Um, he uh, was mayor of Topeka five times, I think, and he is one of the people memorialized with a statue on Kansas Avenue in the downtown beautification, revitalization, uh, just a shot in the arm. Kansas Avenue is incredible, so you've got to bring the kids to see the folks that are being honored, and I know that Carl Ice, who is another native Kansan, another native Topekan, um, was on hand. He is the chairman of the Burlington Northern Santa Fe, BNSF, and he was on hand to dedicate the statue of Cyrus Holiday. Nobody loved Kansas more than Cyrus Holiday, seriously. And, you know, tacking Santa Fe onto the name of the uh, railroad, it was so funny because he didn't know if they'd ever get to Santa Fe, but people wanted a railroad to Santa Fe. You know, it was, had this mystique about it. And by golly, they did. They got to Santa Fe and, and beyond. Yeah. So let's take a look at this famous Kansan. Cyrus Kurtz Holliday was born in 1826 near Carlisle, Pennsylvania. He attended Allegheny College and graduated in 1852 with plans to practice law. Instead, he went into business. After making a handsome profit on a short-line railroad venture, Holliday joined the throng of westward migrants and was among Kansas Territory's first settlers. Holliday settled at Lawrence, but not long after his arrival, he thought he should establish another enclave of free state citizens farther up the Kansas River. Holliday organized the Topeka Town Association and marked off the town's streets and boundaries. He would play a principal role in the founding of the Free State Party. During the Wyandotte Constitutional Convention of 1859, Holliday served as Topeka's delegate. He succeeded in having his city officially designated as the future state capital. He was elected to the first of many terms as mayor of Topeka, and he would help found the Kansas Republican Party, serving in both the territorial and state legislatures. In 1859, Holliday began plans on the construction of a railroad to run from Atchison along the Santa Fe Trail, his most notable business venture. 
The groundbreaking for the Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe took place in 1868. Holliday served as the ATSF director until his death in 1900. Holliday received the honorary, though unofficial, title of Colonel, which he carried for the remainder of his life while supervising a Free State Regiment during the Waka War of 1855. During the Civil War, Holliday served as the Adjutant General of Kansas, in which capacity recruited soldiers and ensured that supplies were sent to the front. Through this downtown Topeka Pocket Park, with his statue as the centerpiece, generations of Kansans will be able to meet the man whose vision has shaped not only Kansas, but the American Southwest. Bill Rischel here in North Platte told me about Kansas Regenerative Medicine. And after talking to Dr. Pope, we did a lot of reading and researching, looking on the internet about it. I guess the thing that impressed me is that he told me, he said, if, it, if we don't think it's going to help you, we're not, we're not going to do it. I'm a former athlete, played college basketball, had some severe trauma on the right ankle. This brace is what I had to wear all the time. Now, I don't wear this during the day. That's a real improvement for me. I encourage anybody that's interested to go down and do a consultation with them. Grain sorghum is one of the most important cereal crops worldwide, and Kansas leads the nation in its production. Over the years, sorghum has been either exported, used in animal feed domestically, or for other industrial uses. Recently, its use in the ethanol market has seen tremendous growth, with 30% of domestic sorghum typically going to ethanol production. Kansas Grain Sorghum is committed to sorghum research, market development, and education. Learn more at ksgrainsorghum.org. Soil is the life of a farm, and for 25 years, SureCrop Liquid Crop Nutrition has helped growers produce abundant quality crops while preserving and improving the soils they steward. SureCrop offers complete soil and plant analysis with cropping recommendations, delivery direct to your on-farm storage, and quality crop nutrition custom blended for your field. Choose SureCrop for the assurance of excellence for your soil. Call today or visit their website for more information. This segment brought to you by Kansas Grain Sorghum, growers working together. Find out more at ksgrainsorghum.org. Howdy folks, I'm Ron Wilson, Poet Lariat. Those of us who live out here in the middle of the country get used to one thing, and that is, the weather's going to change. This poem is entitled, Just Wait a Minute, It'll Change. We've had lots of winter weather, so when we got a thaw, the chance to get outside was really quite a draw. It felt like cabin fever, so I was glad to get outside. Cleaned a feeder, built some fence, and managed to get in a horse ride. I stripped down to my shirt sleeves and got a whole, a whole lot of good work done and found it was the spring's first exposure to the sun. The next day I was in the house paying some ranch bills when I heard a clap of thunder roll across the nearby hills. I tuned in to, to the weather and they proceeded to inform that a wave of snow might follow a local thunderstorm. I just shook my head and went back to working on the books when what I saw at the window made me take a second look. Big fat wet snowflakes were falling from the sky. It looked like a full-fledged blizzard passing by. I finished up my paperwork and bundled up to do my chores and found the sun shining brightly across the great outdoors. It made me think about the weather pattern in this Kansas land. It'll change so dadgum fast that it is hard to understand. And I said to my wife as the weather made its turn, you know you live in Kansas when it snows on your sunburn. Happy trails. Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture, represents grassroots agriculture. The state's largest and most powerful farm organization stands up for its members through leadership development, agriculture education, legal defense, environmental advocacy, farm safety, and risk management. Members also enjoy money-saving benefits. To join our organization today or to learn more, go to www.kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. 
The Kansas Wheat Innovation Center in Manhattan is rediscovering ways to get improved varieties and new genetics in the hands of farmers faster. Grower-led and checkoff-funded research initiatives are bringing about positive change. This grassroots leadership provides a strong voice in Topeka and Washington, D.C. Now is the time to partner with Kansas Wheat in moving wheat forward. Kansas Wheat Commission and Kansas Association of Wheat Growers, farmers investing in their future and yours. Log on to rediscoverwheat.org. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. This segment brought to you by Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. To join today or more information, go to kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back, folks. And I have um, done in various times been a cooking expert or have played an expert on TV. Let's put it like that. I'm not really an expert in anything. I just play one on TV. <laughs> I love mushrooms and I had not experimented and I just mean in the culinary fashion with mushrooms until I moved to Kansas and people ate morels. You know, I don't, I, we weren't into that back home. Now I've gotten everybody back home into in Virginia, North Carolina hunting mushrooms. So once I tasted a morel, I thought, well, there's other stuff out there that's edible. Lo and behold, there is. And one of them is the common puffball. And again, friends, don't take my word for it. I'm not an expert on anything. But I have read a lot, and I've tried them, and I love them. And puffballs, uh, not after they're dried up, and like Dr. Jake says, they throw them at cows and watch them, you know, just explode. <laughs> no, before they're, before they're uh, throwing them at cows. If you slice into a puff ball, it, um, my daughter said it's like the tofu of the mushroom family. It's just this <laughs> white, it's like white bread almost. It's like eating silk. The texture is amazing. It's like <laughs> eating silk. And they'll take on the flavor of whatever you put it with. Like I put them in a little garlic and butter, but they'll just take on the flavor of whatever you cook it with. And the way you tell a real puff ball as you slice it and make sure that there's no stem forming because if there's a stem forming it's something else it's going to be another kind of mushroom mm -hmm. so you know do your do your homework before you before you try mushrooms but there's a lot of really cool if you read up and you know go online and learn a lot of stuff there's a lot of really interesting edibles out there and puffballs are everywhere especially with all the rain we've had this this summer and the thing is is you're never too old to learn something mm -hmm. I had never heard of these until she just brought it up. So, this next story is going to be very interesting to me. Puffballs may very well be the favorite mushroom of childhood. What kid walking through the pasture hasn't stomped the brittle brown ball to watch the smoke puff out in one big whoosh? If the kid is really lucky, there's an entire fairy ring of puffballs for the stomping pleasure. Or, as some of my friends recall, they threw them at cows. Fortunately, they are so light, it is not likely the cows even noticed. Puffballs are a fungus, and one of the delicious edible fungus among us, before it is ripe. Once the flesh gets a tinge of yellow, best to leave it for stomping later. Puffballs range from marble-sized to the giant puffball, which reportedly can get as large as a sheep. Slicing into the puffball is like looking at a piece of white bread, and a true puffball will not have a stem visible on the inside. If it does, it is not a puffball, but a stage of another mushroom's growth. The outer edge of the puffball, the skin, is rough and can appear white to brownish. While it is also edible, it bothers some folks' digestive systems. It is easily peeled away. The puffball itself does not have very much flavor, but takes on the flavor of whatever it is cooked with. While it is low on taste, it is high on texture, and can only be likened to eating silk. They are commonly used in crepes and casseroles. As puffballs ripen, the outer skin becomes thin and brittle and the flesh dissolves into thousands of spores, hence the appearance of dark smoke when the puffball is crushed. As with any mushroom, exercise caution. While there are many edible mushrooms, most are non-edible and some are highly poisonous. Non-edibles are not really poisonous, but often upset the stomach and can make you quite sick. Even edible mushrooms can cause upset stomach for people who are not accustomed to them. So when trying a new mushroom, 
Best to do it in small quantities to make sure it sets well with you. Your local extension office can provide information on which mushrooms or fungi are safe and which ones you can find in your yard or pasture or perhaps clinging to the tree stumps on the creek bank and when they are in season. Happy hunting! Well, that's it. I'm Frank. I'm Deb. And we'll see you somewhere around, around Kansas. Kansas. Gateway to Oz, under the rainbow. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. Let me tell you, Kansas is more than tornadoes. We're the best part of Dorothy's dream. We're the best part of